Hey, welcome, welcome back to Gamers. Hey, so hey, I realized that my hey was very Tony. quiet and very like <laughs> it was very sweet. It was like hey, hey, and uh, how you doing? We have with us uh, Geek Arius. I mean, oh wait, no, wait, who's that behind the mask? Whoa! Oh my God, it still is Jen. <laughs> I'm still here. Apparently, nervous. while I was out of the room, <laughs> she put the mask on and went. I am nice. <laughs> <laughs> she did. It, we actually have it on audio. Maybe we'll make that our outro. Please. I, <laughs> make why did you put my it? voice? I see how it is. Stupid devil wings. What devil wings? <sighs> on hey, the back the way, of his you, head. Speaking of which, did you notice that that door we just went through is actually connected to the dungeon that we were through earlier? You mean the thing that they had already said? Yes. The thing we've already been in? Oh, maybe they did we say that. They actually made that observation in the cutscene. But... Now we can see it. And everyone else that Wait, didn't watch that those earlier weird. episodes, which they totally should, yeah, can also see that. I mean, if you don't want to, I mean, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, the most lackadaisical, like, I, yeah. Finally, we're free. The sun's high up already. Huh? Hey. Y yeah. It was just so bright I got a little lightheaded. Well, I'm a bit frazzled myself from lack of sleep. Hmm? I'm sure my manor is being watched. Let's rest at the inn for now. We should dry our wet clothes as well or we'll catch a cold. Good idea. We should dry our wet clothes, otherwise we'll catch a cold. Oh. I was like, really? They're wet? Because they still look perfect. Okay, so we still don't have the silver key. We are... Where's... Rest at the end. Perfect! Did you watch the cutscene? <laughs> Sometimes the objectives are... Okay, fine. No, they literally no, they... said... <laughs> My manner's being watched. Let's rest at the inn. That's you, why I'm quiet in, in cutscenes. You distracted me with your talk about the wet clothes being serene. It was said <laughs> after... They I'm, said we should go to the inn! I was focused on their sunglasses. I, oh my god. <laughs> we caused yet another scene. Hooray for us. Well, at least we got rid of the malevolence. Incidentally, I suppose. But even so, I'm glad. It feels like now there's nothing we've left undone. You say that like it's your end. In a way, it is. I have decided I'm going to Marland. That's a plague town. You can't really mean to obey them. Whatever twisted motives the Chancellor may carry, the Order is official. And besides, it doesn't change the fact that Marland is suffering. I want to do everything I can for the people of Highland. Alicia. The Council may laugh, but so be it. All right, then I'm going with you. You can't get involved. I've already caused you so many problems. But how do you I feel like so half of the conversations in this game are like don't do that. I don't want to cause a problem for you. No, yeah. but I want to. I care about you. Oh, when you put it that way, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a pretty good point. That does happen a lot. I mean, we That's, see that well, early on a lot with Miklio and like that makes a little bit more sense, right? Because they already have this established relationship. Um, oh my, off the chain. Oh no, oh, don't even start me in the language. But yeah, I think one of the big tropes in this game is the uh, <clears throat> hero trying to do it by themselves. Mm -hmm. Even though they have friends who want to help them. And it was like that in the other game too, in a, a Symphonia. Lloyd it was always like, I don't want my friends to get hurt. Yeah. And then they're all like, but we're here. I, I think the thing that they did better in Symphonia with that was that um, Lloyd never really changed his mind, not until there was a pivotal point. He he always vocalized his, uh, like, he, he always vocalized his concern, right, or his, like, displeasure for people wanting to, like, sacrifice themselves. Um, but the thing was is that his vocalization never stopped them. They just did it anyway, and they were like, well, too bad, Lloyd, that you don't want to do this. I'm going to do this anyway. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Trying to have a good analysis. <laughs> analysis. Analysis. But yeah, um, and in this game instead, it's like, they vo like, Saray vocalizes his displeasure, and then they're like, well, I'm going to do it anyway. And he's like, ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I got you first. Game time, game time. Yay, buddy. 
numbers. <laughs> I, I, you know, I actually wonder if we've ever had any episodes where we haven't fought anything. I feel like due to the sheer amount of cutscenes, it's totally possible. Oh yeah. Apple Jazz. Oh wait, that's right. We did the um, the Lord of the Land, didn't we? So that tre that treasure we opened earlier, and uh, it refilled because of the Lord of the Land. Uh, what a great guy. Right. That dick. But what? Uh, but no, dicks can be good. I mean, actually, that's a good point. Yeah, I agree. I don't really know where to go from there. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, and silence fell across the room. <laughs> well, going to the star, guys. Cause cut star cutscenes. That should be the subtext for God, the game. You know, there are not nearly enough cutscenes in this game. <laughs> Tales of Zisteria, a game of cutscenes and going to stars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How can this be? Tales of Zisteria with a camera system that makes you want to punch a wall. <laughs> Oh man, what's going on over here? Crazy stuff? I uh, know. Let's Curse go or stuff. talk to it. Oh, everyone's got bubbles. You know, <laughs> bubbles. <laughs> oh, that's a curious outfit. You must be the shepherd. Yes, I'm Saray. I am Mafe, a representative of Marnet, the town on the other side of the river. Lord Soray, I hear that you were able to stop the rampage of the Water Spirit. I cannot possibly thank you enough. Oh gosh, that was nothing. Hey, Mr. Nath, was there something that you wanted to discuss with me? Ah, well, you see... Thanks to your heroic efforts in putting a stop to the Water Spirit, the currents have calmed considerably, and we should be able to repair the bridge. But I'm afraid it's still taking too long. I have to make my way back and deliver this medicine at all costs. Huh, I see. Then... Serene. All the Tales games have that JRPG clothing design thing, but they're also mixed with, like... The NPC's clothes are all like, you kind of look medieval, and then we have these other things that I'm like, what the hell are you wearing? And I don't know how to put them together in the same world. I, that's actually a really good point. Like, I, I think when I first heard about this game, maybe this was from a reviewer, but they were talking about how Tales of Zisteria kind of goes back to a, a low fantasy setting rather than a high fantasy or like... Um, even sort of sci-fi-ish that a lot of the other Tales games have done. Um, and I thought that was really cool, right? Because this is a world where magic isn't really a thing. The only reason magic exists is from Seraphim. Um, so with that, I kind of built the expectation that the clothing would be more medieval. And we see that a lot through this the game. But yeah, there are those, like, often totally out-of-place designs. Well, like... Um... With, with Seraphim, it makes perfect sense, though. Because it's I a whole guess. different, it's a totally different culture. But they're in the same world; they exist in the same place. Yeah, although I think the Seraphim. But like, I, I still think like Mikleo's outfit is way more flamboyant and out of world than the people in their village. That's the true. Seraphim that's... in their village. See, the Seraphim in their village are like. That's a good baseline for Seraphim. It's only characters you're supposed to recognize that are dressed flamboyantly and out of the world. Okay, no, that that's a really good point. I'd but, say game design wise, it still could be good to make those important characters stand out through like you know more pizzazz in their clothing, specifically to make them more memorable. Especially when their faces aren't always enough to go off of. But I think you can do it and match the world better. So like, mm -hmm. I think a couple of them are better than others. Like, um, Saray and Alicia's are a little better. I think because uh, Alicia has armor, she has the overshirt that has like the little knight designs on the shirt and mm -hmm. um, items like that. And then Saray has boots, he's got a belt, it's really utilitarian. Um, and it's just like simple jerkin, and I guess his jacket is a little out of place, but it also is like, this is a relic of the shepherds, so it kind of makes more sense that that's a little odd. But um, I think the others in the party seem really 
out of place. Yeah. What like, you- Miklio is wearing modern trouser pants. Like, those pants are very modern. They would not exist back then. Okay. I was going to ask you what exactly it is that you think is so different. Because I know that Miklio has, like, strangely shiny pieces to his, like, details on his clothing. Um, but, like, then there's Lila that doesn't have that, but instead she seems to have a lot more detail in the patterns themselves. Um, but, like, Surrey has a lot of patterns going on, too, or a lot of, like... Not I mean, see, really yeah, possible. start with his pants. Those are the first thing I think that look really modern because those pants didn't exist back then. And then, I mean, I, most people might point to his jacket, but that could also be, like, a really flamboyant version of mm. a jerkin or something. Um, but it's his pants that get me. And his shoes. I guess that makes sense. I think my only um, point to counter that is that they never technically establish that this world is is um, related to our historical world. No, they, the way they do that is the weapons they use and what the NPCs are wearing. Yeah, the, yeah. The, like, background, unimportant people. It, it what becomes they're a wearing, consistency. Yeah, yeah, what they're wearing is really consistent and background and whatever, but they're all... See, they're all muted colors. They're all really simple. They're the same shirt over and over again. So you could take something that they're wearing and modify it to be more flamboyant and noticeable. Mm. That's fair. But they're all in, like, the blue, gray, brown color palette. Everyone in the background who doesn't matter. Oh, no, you're totally right. Not that pink is totally out of place. I know that in a lot of cultures, pink was actually a color of royalty because it was so rare. Well, purple was the most royal. It, I think it actually is dependent on where you are. Um... But I, I could be colors, mistaken, though. Like I said, her outfit, for the most part, fits in more to me. Right, more I than mean, more than a lot of the other like important seraphim, at least. Yeah, yeah, hers fits in a lot more. Um, yeah, I almost wonder if a lot of it has to do with saturation of color. Like I know Saray has some really saturated blues going on, um, but like. Alicia's pinks are kind of like toned down. They're not like punch you in the face pink. Yeah, see, um, she has like little fleur de lis and she has like the couple check patterns at the bottom corners. Mm-hmm. That's super medieval. Yeah. No, that's that's a good point. Do you think part of it then could be like the patterns on, on like Lila's? Not the patterns, it's the. the so, cut. as history and history of fashion goes on, it starts off in like in ancient Greece, they didn't sew anything. They just tied stuff and pinned stuff. Uh, and then in true. the Middle Ages, they learned to sew really basic seams. They have really boxy frame things where you have just, like, a couple seams. And then in the Renaissance or later medieval period periods, you start seeing that something called party coloring where they're, like, mix up colors because they added more seams. You'd have checkerboard patterns and stuff because you're like, oh, cool, look at all the seams we can put in here and the different colors we can add. But it's like the more seams you have, the more modern it is. It gets more and more tailored. Gotcha. Um, so if it's boxier and fewer seams, it's probably older or it's meant to be simple. Gotcha. That makes sense. Um, yeah. But hers hers doesn't fit that right because hers is really form-fitting. And Lila, I'm talking about, hers is really... Her, hers has techniques that don't happen until way later. Yeah, no, that actually makes a lot of sense when you put it like that. But that's why it's good that you're guesting on the series, because you know this stuff. None of the rest of us would have had any clue how to kind of... Well, that always stuck out to me playing any Tales games, is they all kind of feel that way. I think Mm. Symphonia wasn't as bad as this one to me. That's fair. Because even, like... Yeah, most of the main characters were fine, I think, for the most part. But like I said, I think you could take what the NPCs have in this world and make it more interesting and more colorful and more dynamic. And, and still then, have this consistency or, yeah. or even continuity between the So you the still designs. have a world where you're not like, what, what, why are they not here? Why are they in this world? Right. That um, makes sense. And like somebody else you guys don't have in the party yet is even more outside of the world. And I'm like... Is that who we're going to get next, do you mm-hmm. think? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um... Is this, are we, are we at the end of the episode? That we are. Cool. Well, we'll talk about more of this jazz in the next episode. Oh, what's our question of the day? Uh, should we ask about the costume design? Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Do you agree or disagree? Yeah, and, and even then, like, 
Um, based on what Jen's saying too, like if there's anyone else that knows anything about like fashion history or even costume design, like we'd love to hear what you think about the whole thing too. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, thank you for watching, everybody. See you in the archives. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Tony has started so many episodes with a mask on. <laughs> just like Tony, cut the shit. I'll just wear it and you guys can say, Tony, cut the shit. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, cut the shit. Oh, I mean, uh, Jen. I am the knight. <laughs> <laughs>